Hello and welcome to the Global Church Project. I'm Graham Hill. Timothy Lee is a global authority in Christian missiology. He opens up new horizons for 21st century mission, not only in Korea, but for the rest of Asia and the rest of the world. He's taught for many years at Daejeon Korea Baptist Theological University and Seminary. He's worked as the leader of World Mission Training Center for 11 years. He's been instrumental in training and releasing thousands of missionaries all over the globe. Timothy Lee is a member of the Korea Evangelical Missiological Society, as well as the Chairman of the Missions and Evangelism Committee of the Asia-Pacific Baptist Federation. He's passionate about mission, about seeing people released to God's call on their lives in Asia, Korea, and the rest of the world. Timothy Lee, welcome to the Global Church Project. Thank you very much, Dr. Hughes. You're Professor of Missiology in Korea. Can you tell us something about your role there at the Theological College? Well, within the last 25 years, I have served as a professor of missions. Well, basically, I'm teaching the general courses of missiology for the graduate schools and the doctoral program, and sometimes I'm in an undergraduate program. As well, it's a quite interesting. In Korean Baptist churches, we have a missionary training center at the Deloska Seminary. So I heavily involved in the missionary training at the school. And also sometimes I evaluate the missionary strategies on behalf of uh, Korean Baptist Foreign Mission Board. And uh, sometimes I introduce the new strategies uh, for the missionaries in the field. Mm. Those are basically my work. You said that Asia is one of the least, or if not the least, evangelized uh, continent. Can you explain why that has occurred and what do, you, what do you see going on in evangelism in Asia today? Well, unfortunately, as you mentioned, Asia, Asia is the least evangelized continent in the world. Mm. Contemporary total number of Christians seems to be only 8.8% of uh, Asian populations. Mm. Well, and also Asia is uh, one of the main body of uh, so-called temporary windows. So many unreached people groups are located in Asia. Mm. Well, the reason why Asia became the least evangelist continent mm. was another easy question. Mm. But we can look at it in some uh, different perspectives. All the world religions beside the Christianity, I mean the Islam, Buddhism, mm. Hinduism, had their birthplace in Asia. And also, most of their strongholds are located even today in Asia. So there was a strong and old religions, and there was a very solid philosophies already developed and established in Asia. Therefore, when the Christianity come to the, came to Asia many years ago, they had the difficulties to uh, struggle with uh, well-developed philosophies and well-developed religious systems. Maybe mm. at that time they need badly needed uh, strong contextualizations, mm. just like the when Christianity moved, born, uh, born in the uh, Judea and the Hebrew cultures, when they transfer to the Hebrew culture, I don't know, Hellenistic cultures. It was a strong and a big jump of uh, contextualizations. Mm -hmm. So when they came to Asia, if they made uh, that kind of uh, great jump of leap of faith, I mean the strong and the hard contextualization situation would be different. But previously, they tried to uh, override the whole uh, religion and philosophies in Asia, but that was not worked at all. Mm. You've written that Asia is a very different soil than the West, and some of the triumphalism of Western mission hasn't really worked in Asia. Can you explain a little bit about what you mean by that? Well, recently most of the textbook of uh, world history mm. starts from the civilization of the Greek and the Roman empires. Mm. But you know that up until the 12th century, mm. the center of the world was in China. Mm. 
China developed every civilization. It's a surpassed uh, civilization of the Western countries. For example, before the Jesus was born, every kind of ideology and philosophy were developed already in China. Concept of a democraticism, concept of a communism, so uh, capitalism, everything was already thought and studied in China. So many Asian peoples and Asian countries had a strong pride on their culture, on their philosophies. So when the Western missionary came to them, even in the later part of the uh, 18th century or an early part of the 19th century, even they have a strong military powers. But many Asians thought that spiritually, philosophically, they are much higher positions than the Western people. Mm -hmm. So when the Westerners came to Asia with the triumphalistic attitude, mm -hmm. it, was, it didn't work at all. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any mind to accept their new philosophy, new ideologies. Mm -hmm. So at that time, they need to be humble. Western missionaries needed to be humble and to study a lot about the Asian philosophies and Asian mm -hmm. studies. And then things will be changing. Mm. Asians tend to think of truth as esoteric and unexplainable and mysterious. Or at least that, can, that sort of idea is widespread in Asia. What does that mean for the way Christians in Asia communicate mission and faith? There's a big gap, differences mm. between the worldview. West and the East. Mm. In the way, West, truth doesn't mean that uh, understandable. And it must be translatable. Mm. So the, if it is a real truth, everybody can agree what does it mean. Mm. That's the concept of Western uh, civilizations. Mm. However, in the Eastern area, their concept of the truth was a totally different. Mm. Maybe two centuries before the Jesus was born, there was a famous philosopher named Lao Tzu. Mm. He was a founder of Taoism. Mm. And in his book, so-called Tao uh, Dong Jing, it was one of their scriptures. Mm. In the first chapter, they said that if some truth could be understood by any persons, any ordinary persons. It is no longer eternal truth. Yes. So yeah. the Asian thought that the truth is a very profound thing. Mm. Could not understandable to anybody. Mm. So the Western Christianity came to Asian soil mm. and they introduced the very simple word of God. Mm. If you believe this one, you will be safe, you will have an eternal life. Mm. But in the Asian mind, it looks like a very elementary teaching. Yeah. How real yeah. truth could be understandable to anybody, yeah. then this is worthless. Yes. So yeah. if it is a real truth, we need to, we got to spend the years and years of a study and meditations. Yeah. Finally, we reach the, uh, awakening stages, mm. then that's a real truth. Mm. So when they heard the, some doctrines of Christianity, mm. they didn't respect what they told. Mm. So still, it seems to be the same. Currently, most of Asian countries accepted the Western style education systems. Mm. So from the elementary schools, they were trained in the Western concept, Western type of mm. education. So their concept has been changed. So mm. they believe that, well, uh, mathematical mm. truth is all right, mm. and there's a scientific truth all right. Mm. However, still in spiritual areas, Mm. They continue to have a similar mm. worldview about and truth. Mm. So many people do not believe Christian doctrine as a mm. real truth. There's a some mm. gap of worldviews. Mm. And are there ways that Asian Christians are trying to respond 
to that feeling about the mysteriousness of truth? Yes, yes. Mm. Already the, Dr. Paul Hibbert mentioned mm. about that. Mm. In Western society, you believe the spiritual realms. Mm. So there's a God and evils and the angels mm. are mm. located. And here's a very natural world. Mm. Human beings are living and the animals and the natures. So they mm. believe the spiritual realm. However, mm. it was separated. Mm. So oh, after I died, then I will go to the heaven. Mm. But in the Asian countries and the Eastern world, it was overlapped. Mm. So in our daily life, spiritual things and uh, some physical thing, mm. things are working together. So mm. the evil spirit can, and the ancestor spirit can intervene our daily life. Mm. So it was a, actually, uh, Paul Hibbert mentioned it, the uh, intermediate areas. Mm. So mm. we believe that spiritual thing can, can really heavily involve every details. Mm. It was an Asian mind. How have Christians in Asia balanced the need for contextualization with the dangers of syncretism? This is uh, quite a difficult mm. question. Yeah. There's not a, a need uh, of only Asia, yes. but also every yes, area absolutely. in the two third world. Mm. Then we have to think about uh, some difference of uh, worldviews. Mm. Uh, for example, what is uh, good and bad? Mm. What is uh, acceptable or not acceptable? Mm. What is uh, true or false? Mm. Those worlds are very much different mm. from the Western civilizations. Mm. Therefore, contextualizations made a lot of difficulties. Mm. So when the Westerners look at the process of contextualizations in Asia, mm. they believe that they cross the lines. But still, in Asians believe that, well, well what, why it is wrong? Mm. It's okay. So in India, mm. under the heavy influence of uh, Hinduism, Hinduism is not, a, not only a religion, mm. but also their culture and their life is mm. Everything was influenced by Hinduism. Mm. So their understanding of the truth, mm. their understanding of a religion, whatever, mm were heavily influenced by the Hinduism. So the product of uh, contextualizations in India looks like uh, syncretism in the perspective of Westerners. Mm. But we must be very careful. And also another difficulty is that this morning I mentioned a little bit. Evangelical circles are not sure yet what is the real core of the gospel? Mm. The core of the gospel, I mean that the uh, absolute truth, which cannot be changed or alternated. Mm. Then it's not sure. So dependent, the contextual mm. theologians have a different idea of the boundaries of the uh, core of the gospels. Mm. So, Asians have a much wider boundaries of a gospel, but a Western conservative Christian has a very narrow concept mm. of gospel. There's mm. another problem, mm. of course. Mm. Asians are very careful mm. not to fall into the syncretisms. Mm. Unconsciously, mm. they are in a danger of syncretisms. Mm. However, therefore, we need a mutual a dialogue mm. between the Western theologians and Asian theologians, mm. just to try to understand the other side and to try to add their own uh, critics and humbly we accept their critic. Mm. And so there's a way we can get us some balance. Mm. But so far, we are easy to criticize the mm. other parties. You are mm. wrong. But that's not a good attitude. Mm. To get a good balance, we need to continue to mm. talk together and communicate mm. together and receive the, their critics, mm. each other.
you help Christians understand Buddhism as well, I think, and how to witness credibly amongst Buddhists. What's the core difference between a Christian understanding of God and a Buddhist understanding of ultimate reality? Well, Korea was a Buddhist country. Mm. So when I was a boy, before I was accept Christ, mm. I was brought up in a Buddhist family. Mm. So I understand some Buddhist uh, viewpoint. Mm. Well, God in Christian concept mm. is a creator. Mm. That's a big starting point. Mm. Why we obey him? Mm. Because he is a creator of me. Mm. He's a creator of my life. Mm. So our Lord has a supreme authority to control my life. Mm. So I have to obey him. But in Asian mind, Eastern mind, mm. supreme being or God or whatever they call it, usually is not a creator. In our philosophy, there's no concept of a creator. Mm. So Brahman in mm. Hinduism, there's an ultimate reality in mm. Hinduism. Mm. It's just existing. Mm. It doesn't create the world, mm. the cosmos. Mm. So Supreme Being is not a creator. Mm. So there's no concept of a creator and the create creatures. Mm. It is a big difference. Yeah. So the Supreme Being of Buddhism is called the Buddha, whatever. Mm. It can be reachable. Everybody has a possibility to be a Buddha. Mm. If they gain the great awakenings, but mm. we do not know what the awakening is all about. Mm. But anyway, there is a uh, absolute difference differences between God and human beings is mm. a uh, interchangeable in a sense. Mm. So it's a different concept. Mm. And also, Christian God is mm. personal. Mm. He can communicate with human beings. Mm. God loves human beings and uh, human beings love God. So we can share the compassion each mm. other. And uh, it is not a unidirectional dialogue. So mm. it is a two-way conversation. Mm. But in Eastern religion, the god or goddess is not a mm. personal being. There's no way to communicate. Mm. Just we follow their principles and their commandment just to obey and to follow their ways. Mm. So there's a big mm. difference concept mm. of God mm. in the Western and the, in the Eastern mm. world. And when you think about eternal life and how Christians think about eternal life compared to the way Buddhists conceive it, how does that work? It's a very interesting question. Mm. Buddhists believe that they already have eternal life. Mm. The, their perspective on the history is just a, a, a circle, yeah. repetitional, repeatable mm. things. So everybody already have eternal mm. life, mm. so-called reincarnation. Mm. So reincarnation is a really painful thing. Mm. So salvation doesn't mean to get out of the eternal reincarnations. Mm. So the eternal life doesn't mean bad things. Mm. So the Western missionaries came to Asia. So I come to you to give uh, eternal life. It is not a good news for yeah. the Eastern people, especially yeah. Buddhists. Yeah. Well, that's a terrible thing. Yeah. <laughs> we already have uh, eternal life, <laughs> eternal reincarnations. Yeah. We wish to get out of that the eternal <laughs> yeah. cycle of the eternal living. Yeah. So it's a funny thing. Say. It's yeah. a two different uh, mm. concept of eternal mm. life. What about the concept of suffering? How does that differ as well? Suffering is another mm. big problem. Well, Christians also concern about sufferings. Mm. But suffering is another real essence of problems. Mm. Real essence of our problem is mm. sin mm. against God. Mm. Suffering is just a sufficient symptoms. Mm. 
out of our disobedience to the God. Mm. Therefore, our concern is not a symptom, but a essential problems. Mm. Just like in cancer, mm. our main concern is how to kill, mm. how to get rid of a cancerous cell. Mm. Of course, they have a patient has a fever and the pains, mm. but once we get rid of the source of our diseases, mm. those the symptoms will be disappeared. So mm. it is not their main concern to deal mm. with the symptom. Mm. But for the Buddhist, in Buddhism, mm. suffering is not a, just a symptom or a superficial mm. uh, things. Mm. It is the core of essence. Everything mm. must focus on suffering mm. itself. Suffering created so many problems in our human life. Mm. So the major concern of Buddhism is how to get rid of suffering mm. in our way of life. Mm. So it's a two different mm. things. Of course, both religions, Christianity mm. and Buddhism, very seriously concern the sufferings. But one is just a symptom. Another one believes that it is a real core of mm. problems. What do you think are the key areas or themes in which Christianity can connect with Buddhists? Buddhists believe that they mm. have to attain the level of salvation mm. through their good karma, mm. good behavior, good mm. deed. Therefore, they emphasize mm. on the real life and the behavior. So just, of course, in the Bible, we can find out so many recommendations uh, for the good behavior, mm. good deed. So in those parts from the Bible, were easily understandable to the Buddhist and uh, acceptable mm. for their lives. So, for example, someone on the mountain. It talked mm. about a Christian behavior, Christian mm. way of living in the world. So the many Asian peoples easily accept the teachings of uh, someone on the mountain. It's mm. good. So many famous Asian leaders, those were not Christians. Mm. Even they were not Christian, they easily accept the teachings of someone on the mountain. So something to do in the Bible was mm. accepted by mm. the Buddhist in mind. Mm. So that could be a good contact point for us to approach to the Buddhist mm. in Asia. What role does the credibility of the witness play in establishing the credibility of the message? Person. Mm. In Asia, religion doesn't mean the teachings of a great teacher. Then our emphasis places it on mm. teacher, mm. not teaching. Yeah. Well, Christians believe that uh, Jesus is a good, he is himself God and Paul, mm. and uh, we have uh, many mm. good teachers in the Bible, but their concern is only on the Word of God, Word, mm. the truth. But in Asia, good religion does mean to have a good teachers. Mm. So the message could not separate from the human beings. Mm. So Christians believe that the Word of God is uh, infallible. And the messengers, prophet, could be fallible. But in Asia, we have a different concept. Yeah. The real good teachers must be in mm. And their teachings could be Yeah. <laughs> so the, if the, there's no credibility to the good leaders, there's mm. no credibility at all mm. in their teachings. Too. Mm. So the human being and person should be the center of a religious concept. Mm. What are the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path? And then how do those things potentially help us live in a way that witnesses well to Buddhists? Four Noble Truths mm. means the basic theology, basic doctrine of Buddhism. Mm. For example, that has uh, four different truths. Number mm. one is uh, suffering. Mm. So you talk about uh, suffering is a real core of uh, our human being's problem. Mm. 
Number two, uh, attachment. Yeah. It says that uh, suffering was caused because of uh, attachment. Yeah. Therefore, third step said that uh, how can you destroy or how can you annihilate the attachment in your life? Mm. Then you can have no more suffering. Mm -hmm. So final step is that the, the way to uh, annihilate the attachment in your life, mm. you have to follow several eightfold truths. Uh -huh. There's a four noble truths. Mm. Suffering, attachment, annihilation, and the way to attain, uh -huh. uh, attain the dose of annihilation. Yeah. Yeah. Eightfold path doesn't mean the eight different way to uh, Annihilate all the your attachment. Mm. So right, right speaking, right thing, right thought, right behavior, and mm. those it's such kind of a good behavior. Mm. Well, for noble truth and the eightfold path could be a big stumbling block mm. for Christians to witness Christ to the mm. uh, Buddhist mm. because uh, it. Their understanding, their comprehension was totally different from the Western understanding. Mm. So many years ago, maybe you know that uh, uh, Kosuke Koyama, mm. he was the uh, author yeah. of a famous book, Water Buffalo Theology. Yeah. Uh, in that book, he wrote uh, one very uh, interesting article, mm. uh, Aristotelian Paper and uh, Asokas Salt. So in his article, very well presented some different understanding between the mm. Christian and the Buddhism. For mm. example, Christian missionaries came to the Buddhist and said that God loves you, I love you. Mm. Then it is a good word in Western world, mm. but in Asia it has a different meanings. Mm. Love is a typical example of attachment. Ah, yeah. Their life goal is to uh, exterminate the attachment in their life. So mm. they are trying to cut off every attachment in their life. The missionaries came to them and they tried to give a big attachment in yeah. their life. Yeah. Oh, it is awful. <laughs> yeah. I don't like to be loved. <laughs> and also, we talk about uh, eternal life I mentioned. Mm. It is different meaning, sir. Mm. Eternal life is not a good thing. Mm. So they want to get rid of eternal life. Mm. Another thing is that, uh, for example, judgment. If you do not obey the word of God, finally God will judge you. Mm. In Asian concept of God, God cannot judge human beings. Mm. So the Buddhist concept of God doesn't mean that Buddha is a great mercy and compassion. Mm. He says, so great mercy and compassion, so cannot pay back to the human beings. Mm. He cannot be angry. Mm. If God is angry and God is mad and God is pay back, it's not, it's not a big God. It is a small God in Asia. Yeah. So the Christian gospel could not mean in Asian mind as what they expected the missionaries. Mm. So the Kosuke Koyama said that it looks like a plug in the 110 electric bulb to the 220 electricity. So it is a very dim light came out. Yeah. So the Western concept of uh, gospel could not work just like mm. in the Western world. Mm. However, therefore we need to contextualize mm. our gospel to witness in Asia. So many years ago, I wrote uh, one article about uh, how can we contextualize the, mm. our gospel to the Asian mind using the Four Noble Truths and the mm. Eightfold Paths. Mm. So for example, we can teach like that. Suffering is a real matter, but we have to concern why there is a suffering. Mm. So suffering is a, not a core problem. We have to move more deeper levels. Mm. 
why why we have mm. suffering and second level attachment love not every certain attachment is bad mm. there's a, some good attachment mm. through the bible and the, even the teachings of a buddha ask us to mm. escape the from the evil attachment yeah so pure love is mm. good attachment mm. so we need love as a good attachment mm. and uh, annihilation mm. or uh, extermination mm. we have to exterminate the evil attachment mm. loving money and uh, lust mm. those things are evil attachment we have to destroy of them however there's a good attachment we have to attain that those things mm. and also for the buddhist as a, a substitute of aid for the past we emphasize the real life real mm. behavior change the life mm. of believers mm. so it is a new pattern of uh, some uh, uh, for spiritual law <laughs> yeah. so if we can contextualize our concept it might be wrong mm. because mm. there's a, a basic need of a mm. human being to be loved mm. it's the same to the buddhist they mm. want to be loved they want to love mm. some others so we can touch the deeper level of mm. their mind mm. it works i believe mm. i hope mm. i want to ask you about theological education what do you see as some of the problems for theological education in Asia today? Most of uh, mm. the theological education in Asia mm. just to follow the Western pattern of theological education. Sometimes it's good, sometimes bad. Mm. So, for example, Western theology was uh, based on the Western philosophy. Mm philosophies of uh, Plato, philosophies mm. of uh, Aristotle, so Augustinian theology based on the Plato's philosophy mm. and uh, Thomas Aquinas's theology based on the Aristotelian mm. uh, philosophies. Mm. So it's funny, Asian theological students do not know about uh, Plato's and Aristotle's. Mm. To understand the Western theology in the first level, mm. they have to learn the philosophy of Plato's and the mm. Aristotle's. Yes. Then, using that tools, we have to understand the theoretical understandings. Mm. Then, Plato's and Aristotle's were not the biblical things. Mm. Just uh, that was a tool. Mm to transfer the biblical truth to the Western people. Yeah. What about, is it possible we can use uh, Asian philosophy mm. Mm. to hold the truth of the Bible and transfer mm. to the Asian mm. mind? Mm. It is very dangerous uh, ideas, but it might be possible, mm. actually. For example, mm. Western pattern of theology always mm. focus on sin creator and creatures the mm. relationship was broken it was called the sin so mm. we need the repentance mm. to return god mm. however in eastern world there's no concept of a creator mm. Cre creator and creatures so it was not understandable easy mm. we have to understand using the western frame of philosophy mm. So it's much easier. We uh, look at it in different patterns, like mm. a father and son. Mm. So there's uh, some relations. Mm. Uh, so if there's a relation was broken, it was uh, uh, broken of a filial royalty. Mm. So return to God is uh, just to recover their uh, filial royalty. Mm. It's much for them to understand the whole framework of a relationship between Father God and the Son. Yeah. So it is a, just a one mm. example. Mm. Even in our theological education system, mm. looks like a purely Western frames. Mm. So I'm not sure how can we 
restructure the Deloitte education, mm. fit into the Asian mind, but we need to do that. Mm. Uh, for example, Western theology always approach using the kind of a quadruple structure, biblical theology, systematic theology, church history, and practical theology. Yeah. Maybe 99% of Asian theological schools follow that quadruple structure. Yeah. Is it absolutely needed to follow that both quadruple yeah. structures? Yeah. One of my school in my country, using different patterns, they try to provide a kind of a synthetic, comprehensive yeah. structures. For example, our final goal is a preaching. Preach the word of God. But a Western mm. style, we have to learn the uh, hermeneutics in the biblical study. Oh. And we learn the systemic theology through mm. the theological study. Mm. We learn the traditions through the church history. Mm. And we learn the skills and the methodology mm. to proclaim the word at the, in the systematic and uh, practical yeah. theology. But this could try to combine everything just to, in one classes, one courses, from mm. the harmonious to, to the uh, preaching themselves, just in one classes. Mm. So they usually have uh, two professors in one courses. One is a scholar, another one is a pastor. Yeah. So they are, provide a kind of a synthetic model. Mm. It's another example uh, more effective in Eastern world. Mm. You know, I see some uh, experimentation with these sorts of models in Latin America as well, you know, where people are trying to think through what would it look like to do theological education engaged genuinely in life, mm -hmm. not, not in an institution. That's true. That's and so true. that's been interesting to have a look at as well. What do you think a, a missiological approach to theological education would look like? Missiology is not a, just a part of a practical theology. Mm. Missiology can be a capstone yeah. of all disciplines of theology. Mm. So far, mm. most of theology mm. education thought that the mission study is just a part of a practical theology. So mm. they focus on the method mm. and the skills and training themselves. Mm. But I do not believe so. Mm. Mishala just focus on the mission of God. Mm. It is a really capstone of mm. everything. Mm. So mm. I want to say like this. Mm. What is the goal of a theological education? Mm. It's not just to provide uh, local church ministers mm. or enhance the, uh, the ministry skills. Mm. Rather than the goal of a uh, uh, theological education should be the how can we build and enhance the kingdom of God in the world. Mm. That means mm. the missiological ideas. Mm. So the missiological approach should be the should apply the every disciplines of mm. theological education, whatever the mm. biblical study, the systematic mm. theology, church history, mm. even to the practical mm. theology. Mm. They have to accept the missiological approach mm. and uh, make sure what is the goal of our education mm. to achieve mm. the mission of God in our churches and our daily lives. Mm. Then there's a basic way to approach uh, using the missiological approach to the theological education. Mm. When you travel around Asia, and if I ask you, what do you think God is doing in Asia today? What are some of the big things that God is doing in the Asian church and in Asian society? What kind of things come to mind for you? God wants everybody to restore the relationship with God mm. through the reconciliations. Mm. So therefore, the God utilized the local churches and the local ministers mm. to witness the Christ mm. and the how to uh, reconcile with God and the restore mm. the relationship mm. of God. Mm. So God is basically doing those things in Asia. Mm. However, Asia has a very specific need. Mm. Uh, poverty, mm. uh, 
some segregations and uh, some equal rights of a human uh, mm. women. Yeah. So many problems, mm. political problems, mm. and the natural disasters, whatever. Mm. So compared to the Western world or mm. other continent, mm. God, I believe, wanted mm. to utilize the local churches mm. to meet those needs mm. according to this word of God in the what do you most love about your ministry? You know that within the last 2,000 years of church history, mm. it is the most blessed time of a revival. Mm. So many people return to Christ. Mm. Of course, it is a good period. Holy Spirit is working in the world, mm. and also we have many technology mm. to assess to the needed people. We have a good information development of a traffic and the communication, whatever. So it is the one of the most blessed time of a ministry. So I'm so exciting <laughs> that I'm living at this point of time. Yeah. And also I was called to be a full-time minister. Mm. And also I'm serving in the area of uh, missions. Mm. It was so, I'm, I believe I'm so lucky guy, yeah. <laughs> and I'm excited about yeah. that. If there was one thing that you wanted to say to the church today, what would that be? Especially to the Asian churches, I want to say that to be the light, shine mm. in the darkness. Mm. Many Asian Christians accept a very simple gospel. Mm very individual gospel, mm. privatization, privatized gospel. Mm. Just uh, his own, her own individual salvation, mm. forgiveness of sin and go to heaven someday. But gospel is uh, much more than just uh, mm. individual salvation. Mm. So I wish to tell them that to be the light, to shine yeah. in the darkness of the world. Mm. Timothy Lee, thank you for joining us at the Global Church Project. Thank you very much. Yeah. I enjoyed it very yeah. much. The Global Church Project is located at www.theglobalchurchproject.com. On our website, you'll find a wide range of interviews and resources for colleges, universities and churches. I look forward to your company next time. From me, goodbye.